Have you ever seen those spinning things on top of roofs and wondered what they were? Maybe some kind of transmission device to communicate with aliens? That's what I used to think. <laughs> well, maybe some of them are, but these and other devices like them are used to ventilate your roof and your attic. So roof ventilation, that's what we're talking about today. Welcome to episode 10 of the weekly wrap up. My name's Tyler and I'm a designer at an architecture firm here in California. If you're new here, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. I post weekly updates of what it's like to work in an architecture office, as well as other videos related to architecture and design. So if you find that kind of stuff interesting, consider subscribing down below and let me know what else you want to see from me. All right, let's get into this week's work. So I'm taking a quick break from all the school projects that I've been talking about for the past couple weeks. I told you all last week that I was moving into a phase of the project called construction documents. This means that most of my time has just been spent sitting in front of the computer, drafting plans and putting the drawing set together. This can get pretty boring, but luckily for me, my office is set up that there's always opportunity to work on different projects in different phases. So this week, I got pulled to the side by another architect to help with a different project. This one is an office building for an agriculture company. This doesn't sound very exciting at first, but the design is very interesting. It's essentially a glass box in the middle of some crop fields. I know it seems like a strange location, but it's where the company that owns these crop fields is going to be relocating its headquarters into this building. I can't take any credit for this design. I didn't work on it before this point, but it's a cool design and I'm proud to be a part of the architecture firm that's designing this building. So what does all this have to do with roof ventilation? Well, the task I was given this week was to do some research on whether or not we needed to ventilate the roof. So how do we find this out? To the building code. <laughs> Okay, wait, not so quick. First, I need to know the construction of the roof, the attic, and the ceilings. And we'll start with the roof. The architect I'm working with drew out the details for the roof construction so I know what type it is. It's a standing seam metal roof with 4x12 wood framing underneath it. There's more detailed components to it than that, like the insulation and the waterproofing, but those are just the basics. Okay, so we have the roof construction. Now we need to see what the ceilings look like to determine what the attics look like. We'll go to the reflected ceiling plan, otherwise known as the RCP for this information. Here, we can see that the ceilings are a mix between hard lid jip board ceilings and T-bar grid acoustic tiles. You can also see that we put the height of the ceilings on this plan. This is so the contractor building it knows how high off the floor we want these ceilings to be. This is great information so far, but here's where having a 3D model of the building really comes in handy. If we built the model correctly, I can click on this section cut line and I can see what the building would look like if I took a big slice right through it. We can see what the attic space looks like above the ceilings now. And this is really helpful to do when we start putting in systems like fire sprinklers and HVAC units because we can see where conflicts might happen in the attic and we can rearrange these systems based on the space that we have. But for now, I just need to check where the ceilings are compared to where the roof structure is. The last part of this is to know where we have any walls that are full height, which means any walls that go all the way up. I'm all the way up and connect to the roof structure. Not all the walls in this building do this, and they don't all need to. It just depends on what we want as the architect of the building and what the structural engineer asks us to do too. This one's actually pretty simple. We're taking the walls in the main lobby area and the corridors and making those go all the way up. I'm all the way up. So that way the sound from these spaces doesn't travel over into the offices. This ends up splitting the attic into six different zones now. All right, now back to the code. I'm in California, so I need to look at the most recent California building code, which happens to be the 2019 version. I like to use this website called Upcodes that makes it really easy to search for specific code sections. I'm looking for the chapter on interior environments, which happens to be chapter 12. And we can see right here that section 1202 is the section for ventilation. I won't bore you with all the details, 
But what this basically says is that anywhere you have a fully enclosed attic or you're putting the ceiling directly to the underside of the roof structure, you need to ventilate that space. This is so that temperature swings that go from high to low don't cause condensation to form in your attic and rot away your roof structure. Now that we have our code reference, we'll go back to the plan and figure out where this might apply to our building. So we can see that in the main lobby and the corridors, we've created a situation where we have a fully enclosed attic. The walls go all the way up to the underside of the roof structure and the ceiling is a hard lid gyp board ceiling. This means that the attic above these spaces is completely cut off from the rest of the building and so it has no ventilation, so we need to provide it here. Luckily for us, those spaces are right in the middle of the building where the ridge of the roof is. So all we have to do is install a vented ridge cap on our standing seam metal roof. The vent will run all along the ridge of the roof and allow hot air and moisture to escape from the attic since hot air always rises. At the other zones in the attic, we actually don't need to worry about ventilating them. The ceiling in these spaces is a T-bar grid acoustic ceiling. This type of ceiling has a series of small holes in it, which allows air to pass through it. Unlike the hard lid gyp board ceilings in the corridors in the main lobby, which don't allow air to pass through. What this means for the attic spaces above these other zones is that the air conditioning we're providing for these offices will actually go up through the ceilings and into the attic to ventilate it. So we're good here. We really only need to worry about the three zones where we created that enclosed attic and we took care of those with our ridge vent. I hope this helped you understand roof ventilation a little more and why we need it. I didn't go too far into the construction or specifics of roof ventilation because there's already plenty of videos out there on that topic. This was just the architectural perspective of where we provide it and why. But for now, that's gonna do it for this episode of the Weekly Wrap Up. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.